Hello everyone, Mike with Spray Jones, and I'm going to go over who are the most dangerous foamers. I've already identified how to spot a rogue company in a previous video, but I want to point out, I think, five people that you're going to come across that are easy to cause you much damage and how to sort of spot them here. So the first one would be the new guy. This is somebody who has zero experience. They just decided to buy a rig and they they have no previous spray foam experience. They don't actually have anybody on their staff that has sprayed foam. Um, and they they're, maybe they're a drywaller, maybe they're a bat and poly guy, or maybe they're just a painter or framer or a siding guy or maybe they're an IT tech maybe they're a telephone communications guy I don't know they have decided to buy a rig and they're going to give you a deal to try them out and you know a job that should take an afternoon takes them two days and they don't clean up and they don't know what they're talking about and I actually had a guy call me up get this he wasn't gonna hire me but he wanted to talk to me because he was getting a deal from a guy that just got into the business who was a friend of his and he wanted to know whether or not the guy was telling him the truth so he wanted to talk to me to see if he could vet him out and uh, I was polite and I answered his questions because I decided that rather than give him sort of a bugger off response uh, I would answer his questions so he could go back and see just exactly what his friend was telling him and plant the seeds for potentially doing some work with them down the road but the new guy is always very dangerous uh, and should be a last resort if you can help it the second is going to be the out of province out of state out of county installer now if you can't find anybody in your area and you've got to find somebody that's two, three, five, eight hours away and get them to come to you, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about where people you know have banded together to have enough work to bring out this person for a week or three or four days. I've had people do that for me too. I've come into a small town and we've sprayed three or four jobs over a couple of days and got everybody to go boom 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 that's not what I'm talking about I'm talking about the unsolicited we're in the area we're doing this guy down the street we're from out of state we're from out of province we're from a whole nother region would you like some spray foam could you use some spray foam while we're here look out because you are now dealing with somebody that has what I call the tail light warranty right they foam it you pay them and then that's it they're out they leave you're never getting them back and depending on what they do and how they do it when with what products they do it you have no clue they, they could be doing something completely atrocious to you uh, and you've got no recourse so if somebody has brought someone into the area and you trust your neighbor and, and he's done his homework and you do your homework that's different but watch out for the out-of-town person that comes soliciting to you uh, we're going to be in your neck of the woods next week and if you'd like to hire us here's what we're doing third is the installer that is always wanting a cash deal they're always wanting to work for cash uh, you get no quote you get no invoice it's cash in hand and they take off quick now I've I've sprayed ice fishing shacks for a couple hundred bucks I've done some favors for some people on some dog houses and some animal pig areas or cattle lean-to areas that needed some spray foam to back that's not that's not what I'm talking about I'm talking about they're coming to spray foam your basement every quote you got was five thousand dollars to do it in closed cell foam and this guy says he'll come in and do it for three thousand dollars cash walk run the other way you're going to have nothing but trouble. I lost a $10,000 job one time because the guy said there was going to be another guy come in and he was going to do it for cash and that we basically had to match this cash offer 
or we wouldn't get the job. Well, we didn't. So that really aggravates me because you want there to be a quote. You want there to be a proper invoice. You want there to be a pedigree on the product that you're doing. And cash deals don't ever create an environment to help you with that. The fourth is the price matcher. Oh, the price matcher. The person that tells you that you go get three quotes and he'll match or beat any price, right? Or you go and get everything, do all the legwork, or one-on-one. -on -one. They know that you're, 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 they're pricing against Jim. And Jim over there, you go talk to Jim, and when Jim gives you his number, you bring it to me and I'll beat it. Have absolutely no patience for those kinds of people. Look out. I had a, I had a guy that was getting his shop spray foam. He didn't hire me. He goes and he tells me, Oh, hey, Spray Jones, what's your square foot price? And I said to him, I can't give you a square foot price. Why? You know, I don't know what you're building. I don't know what you're doing. Oh, we, we've hired these other guys and they're coming in. And it was down to this, the guy that they hired, it was down to two of them. And the two of them, this is how, this is how stupid my competition is. They were dropping each other's price. I'll see your price and lower it. Yeah, well, I'll see that price and I'll lower it. And they were down in the end. They were down to like one and two cent a square foot increments to see who would finally call it quits and have the lowest price. Can you believe how cotton picking stupid that is? You deserve to go bankrupt. So the, the price match people, they're going to go down. They're always going to have to make up the, the number somehow, some way. Um, either they will give you the job and they're out of business a year or two later, or they're going to have to find a way to cut a corner. You're going to get an inch, and they called it three. And they're not going to come back and warranty anything. They're not going to come back and touch anything up. And if you find that you've got any issues, forget it. They're not answering your, your phone calls. You're going to be coming back to Spray Jones, calling me, see what I can do for you, right? Because the other guy won't help you out. All right, number five. This is the last one, and it's probably the worst of the bunch. I've saved the worst for last. <laughs> the part timer. Uh, the part timer is a poacher. They they do another job, and uh, they've decided to get a foam rig. They're again, they're a framer, they're a drywall guy, they're a concrete guy, they're a whatever, and they've added spray foam as one of the four things, five things that they do. The problem is the rig sits, and when spray foam rigs sit, they get crusty. They get blocked up. The isocyanates start to crystallize. So when they go to pull the rig out, even if it's been sitting for two weeks, the moisture starts to build up and cure these things. The gun's always clogged, so they got an unhealthy pattern. They got a fingering pattern. They got chunks in the screens. The gun's going off ratio. They're constantly fighting with things. So your job is going to look like a dog's behind. Uh, it's going to not be sticking in a lot of situations. They're in a rush. Uh, they didn't plan it out. They're doing it when it's frosty, when it's wet, when it's too cold, when it's too hot. Uh, I saw one guy come out and he sprayed a job and he ran out of chemical. Ran out of chemical and because he's a part-timer he didn't have any more so he didn't finish the job. So the guy phones me up and says, would you come out uh, and finish off the last 200 square feet? I told him to go pound sand. So the Part-timers are some of the worst in the industry because their equipment isn't kept up, their knowledge isn't kept up, and they come in and it's just sideline money to them. They don't have to eat and sleep and pay for their mortgage and pay for their family and provide for, for someone else, their employees. They don't have to. It's just selfishness. They come out, they come out and say, all right, I'll do this for 500 bucks. Maybe I'll make a couple hundred bucks. And it's just weekend drinking money to them. So... I've taken a few jobs off part-timers part where they didn't know what they were doing and they scared the bejesus out of the homeowner, the building owner, the, the renovator person, and then they, they fired them before they ever pulled the trigger uh, and came in and did the job and, and did everything right. So, five different solutions, five different people here. Look out for these people. If you start to encounter one of these five, walk, run and find somebody that's going to take care of you okay so stay safe out there 
and we'll catch you on the next one. Click like and subscribe. Comment if you can. Talk to you later.